crackers or anything that you can chew. Okay, because we're going to do a little exercise um, about chewing and paying attention to our food. Oh, look at Oh, look, look at that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> She's got raisins. and. Rosetta, you I can are, share, I can you share can, them. You are well <laughs> hey, throw me one. <laughs> you know how they do that on Zoom? <laughs> it the other way. Can, you know, it can be a piece I, I of, of cereal. It can be um, a couple. We want two of something. Um, How about like cheese? Cheese would be fine. Oh no, anything in Marianne, I know you're in your office, so you may be quite limited in what you've got available. I got candy, m and <laughs> <laughs> Well, we want something that um, doesn't melt in your mouth. <laughs> But, um, you know, something that you can actually chew. And you can, I guess you can chew m and I'm not yeah, going to. Yeah. How about peanut, peanut m and M's? Peanut m and M's, Marianne. Yeah. I don't think I have anything good in here, to be honest with you. <laughs> so I'll just wait a moment for everybody to come back. But I thought that um, with Thanksgiving being this week, um we we can combine some some gratitude with some mindful eating because this is kind of the start of the season the season of delightful things that tempt us constantly um and maybe even more so with um this you know quarantining um, there's a lot that I know tempts me, um, and there's more time to bake and, um, you know, all of those things that can be very comforting. So, um, we will, we'll go with that. So, um, I don't know if everybody's back, but we will start with just a little meditation, um, to uh, kind of get ourselves into the mindset of gratitude, okay? And if you don't find anything in your kitchen that particularly qualifies, just grab anything. We'll make it work, okay? Um, so let's just get into a comfortable meditative posture no, and would that. you like everybody to, to mute themselves until they're ready um, to go into That would be session? great. Okay. Yep. Thank you so much, Marianne. Um, and how do I do that? It's up at the top. Um, there you go. You got it, Janet. Okay. Um, so yes, a nice, nice posture, dignified, yet relaxed. And limbs uncrossed, feet flat on the floor, if that's available to you. Um, if not, just make sure your, your feet or your heels are touching something that you can sort of feel grounded. And let's just begin by taking a few nice deep breaths. So breathing in, nice deep belly breath, right from the belly. And then exhaling, letting it go. And then another inhalation in through your nose, if you can. And then exhaling through your mouth. And one more time, a deep belly breath in, really activating that relaxation mode and exhaling through your mouth. And then just returning to your normal breathing pattern, whatever that may be, and maybe paying attention to um, how your breathing is today. Is it shallow, deep? Um, is it quick? Maybe you've been busy this morning or is it pretty slow and, and rhythmic? No need to judge it or manipulate it, just let it be. Just whatever your breath is, 
the, the breath just knows what your body needs at any given moment. And maybe appreciating that stillness that comes with relaxation. Perhaps the quiet around you, the stillness of your body, just the, the sense of being as opposed to doing. We're entering that busy, busy time of year. Actually, every time of year is busy. And just allowing yourself this time for the next 40 minutes to just appreciate the gift that you're giving yourself of stillness, of that little vacation from doing, doing, doing. And thanking yourself for taking such good care. And let's just begin with a little bit of a body scan, um, starting at the top of your head. Just move down through your body and notice any sensations that may be occurring in your body. You know, starting at the very crown of your head, moving down through your face. Is there any tension around your eyes, around your mouth, in your jaw, and moving down into your neck? If you notice any tension there, maybe giving it a little half circle roll from shoulder to shoulder. And then moving into your shoulders, are they relaxed? And maybe giving them some, some shrugs, forward and backward, and then reversing that shrug. Just letting them relax, moving tension out of them. And then down into your arms, are your arms relaxed at your sides or on your lap? Are your hands clenched or are they open and kind of in a receiving position, ready to take in calmness, openness? And noticing your chest, How's your, how does your chest feel? Is there tightness there from any tension that may be left over from the morning? Can you feel your heart beating? And then moving into your back. Is there any discomfort in your back? You know, maybe if you do sense some discomfort, just kind of shifting your posture a little bit to, to give yourself some, some more comfort. And noticing how your back is being supported by whatever you're, you're sitting on, lying on. And then moving down into your hips and your pelvic area. Any sensations there? And if so, trying to soften those. Not, not judging them. Not necessarily even considering them in a negative way. Just simply acknowledging, okay, there's, there's some discomfort there. This makes it difficult. 
What we resist persists. And then moving down, <clears throat> excuse me, into your upper legs, noticing what they're resting on, what they're making contact with, into your knees. How are your knees feeling? And into your lower legs, the shins, the calves, any soreness, any discomfort. And moving right down into your ankles, maybe rotating your feet, giving your ankles a little remote massage through that rotation. And noticing your feet, the tops of your feet, the bottoms of your feet. Maybe they've been carrying you, you've been standing a lot or walking a lot. Just noticing. And right down into your toes. Maybe flexing those toes. We tend to take our toes for granted. They have a lot to do with our balance, our ability to move. And then just sensing the whole body as a total part of our being. And letting any discomfort that might remain just soften if that's available to you. And if not, that's okay. And now that we've paid attention to our body, we're gonna show it a little bit of gratitude this week of Thanksgiving. So let's start by bringing attention back to our heads and thank your ears for listening. Thank your eyes for taking in the world. Thank your tongue for speaking your truth. Thank your mouth for eating nourishing food. And thank your mind for its insight and its ability to focus. What a wonderful thing. And then moving down into your chest, thanking your lungs for breathing in fresh air. Thanking your heart for beating. and bringing your awareness into your arms. Thanking your hands for writing, for holding books, for creating. Thanking your fingers for their sense of touch. Thanking your arms for any hugs that you've given or received today. And I know that we can't necessarily give hugs right now, but remembering the hugs that your arms have given or received and showing gratitude for that. And then tuning into your torso and thanking your belly for digesting nourishing food
thanking those many vital organs for all of your body's functions. And feeling into your lower body, thanking your legs and feet for carrying you around all day. And finally, connecting with your whole body, thanking your body for being your vessel in the world, your vehicle for experiencing each day fully. And when you're ready, just coming back to an awareness of your surroundings, maybe giving yourself a nice stretch, whatever feels good to you, and opening your eyes whenever you're ready. So how are your bodies feeling? They respond awfully well to gratitude. So um, I said we, get, we were gonna talk a little bit about mindful eating and you may be wondering what mindful eating is. Well, it's actually just simply paying attention to what you're eating and why you're eating it. Um, you know, it's just kind of this, this non-judgmental attention to our moment to moment experience of eating and also becoming just more inquisitive about hunger and, um, you know, kind of an interest in the feeling of hunger that we each have. Um, and using all of our senses to be present in the eating experience. So if you will um, take your, your food that um, you were able to find in your kitchen and um, take two of them, if you have more than two, and just put them in the palm of your hand. And for um, purposes of this exercise, I'm gonna call them raisins. Um, if we were doing this in person, which I wish we were, um, I would have given you your own little box of raisins. Um, so, you know, just to simplify matters, I'm going to call them raisins. And the two that you have in your hand, take one of them, go ahead and eat it. I'll give you a moment. And when you're done eating, take a look at the other raisin that you have in the palm of your hand. Okay, really, really look at it as if you were an alien who had just come to earth and had never seen this type of food before. You didn't know if it was alive, if it was edible, if it was poisonous. Um, you didn't know if it was going to, to grow and expand. You had no idea about the qualities of this particular food. You didn't even know it was food. So really, really look at that. Notice um, any differences in texture, any differences in coloration. Um, maybe take your, your index finger and just sort of roll it around in your in your palm, maybe turn it over. Does it look different on one side than the other? 
just really looking different colorations, anything at all, is if you've never, ever seen this thing before. And notice um, as you're touching it, what does it feel like? Is it smooth? Is it rough, textured? What about its shape? Is it asymmetrical or symmetrical? You know, can you um, can you squeeze it? Is it soft? Is it hard? And then take that object up to your ear and just roll it around between your your thumb and index finger. Can you hear anything? You know, maybe squeeze it a little bit. See, does it make any kind of a noise? And then put it right on the top of your lip, but don't, don't put it in your mouth just yet. Just put it on the top of your lip. And just notice, does your, does your mouth begin to salivate? Are you looking forward to putting it in your mouth? Do you have an urge to put it in your mouth? How do you feel about it? Are you looking forward to eating it? Or not? Are you just kind of neutral about it? And then take a nice deep smell of that food. What do you, what do you smell? Can you smell certain, um, certain ingredients? Is it sweet, sour? Do you anticipate what it might taste like as you smell it? And I'm so sorry, I have to run out and let my dog out. <laughs> She's ringing the bell like crazy. I'll be right back. So just, just continue smelling that. And I'll be right back. I'm so sorry, the joys of working from home. Um, and now go ahead and put that object on your tongue. Don't chew yet, just put it on your tongue. And notice how is your mouth responding to that? Are you really, really wanting to bite into it? Can you taste anything even with it just sitting on your tongue? And if you're able, can you, can you roll it around a little bit on your tongue and notice how it feels as you roll it around? Can you sense the texture of it just through, through it being on your tongue? What are the sensations? And now go ahead and take a bite. Don't chew yet, just a bite. What happened when you bit into it? Was there an explosion of flavor? Was there a crumbling of the object or um, just what happened to it? Was it bitten into two pieces or were there just a whole lot of pieces that um, exploded into your mouth? Do you want to chew more and more and more? What's the experience of it? Does it, is it pleasant? Is it unpleasant? Is it neutral? Just noticing and then go ahead and chew. Just not swallowing quite yet, but just chewing. N knowing um, perhaps which side of your mouth you began chewing on. Is there one side predominant or not? And of course, there's no right or wrong. It's just simply noticing. 
And how does it taste to you now? Is the flavor um, still intense from that first bite or is, is it diminishing as you're chewing and, and your saliva is um, perhaps diminishing the flavor of it? And do you want to swallow it? And when you've really chewed it, go ahead and swallow it. And notice as it's going down your, your throat, like really carefully going down your throat into your esophagus, maybe even feeling going right into your stomach. and reflecting on how that was for you. Do you want more? Did you notice anything different in eating it in this way as opposed to the way that you ate that first raisin, or whatever your piece of food was? Was there a greater appreciation? Were there any surprises for you in eating in this way? And you know, please go ahead and unmute yourselves if, if you would like to comment on what that experience was like for you. Even if you were just simply wondering, what the heck are we doing here? Why are we taking so much time to eat one lousy raisin or whatever? Anybody, any, uh, any difference in the, the first piece of food and the second piece of food? I remember um, sort of something like this from Weight Watchers and I haven't thought about it in a long time. So they did a little exercise like this? When you really taste your food. Oh, okay, okay. Thanks, Janet. Anybody mm -hmm. else? I also, um, I, I ate it. I mean, I actually think that some of the flavor almost dissipated. It stayed in there so long. I kept waiting, mm -hmm. you know, I it mm -hmm. lost some of its flavor eventually. Mm -hmm. I tend to eat slowly anyway. And I tend to love my food. Uh -huh. my, um, I describe my vacations based on where I went for dinner. And <laughs> my children know how to do that as well. And it distresses me. Uh, you know, my husband should be sitting here because he's the one that eats you know, really cool. But he, the difference between it is, I might both two my my two sons are both foodies and love to cook, and my daughter doesn't. And for her, she says she eats to live, not live to eat. I live to eat. How many live mm -hmm. to eat? Yeah, I yeah. love 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 food. So um, I think that you know it, it makes a, a difference, and mm -hmm. um, and it, uh, I you know that's very frustrating. So have you any techniques that I can? Uh, work my husband with well, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna uh, uh share some some tips um and maybe you can make it like a little family game it's kind of fun <laughs> anybody else any surprises that you experienced josetta yeah i just want to add my husband for linda's sake my husband's in the background here and he says this sounds like it's torture <laughs> Count Dracula, what Count Dracula does every day. So good luck, Linda. <laughs> and I've had the opportunity to go through a whole mindfulness training of which we had one week. To, to we had the experience like you giving us, Jan, and then doing a whole week of really eating mindfully. And it's it's wonderful to be able to um, be able to truly enjoy the taste of food. And this is a great reminder because that's been a long time, but I have a difficult time when I see somebody take a cookie this big and put it all in because it's like, if you just take a small bite, you get as much flavor and it's like eating eight cookies if it takes you eight bites. <laughs> you can often eat less. Yeah. Simply by taking yes. the time. But yeah. the other thing is, is if you, doesn't matter right now. So it's a great time, but but eating mindfully in a group can be challenging because you know, you'll be just barely starting to eat 
and other people will be done. And then they make, re people make remarks like stop talking and don't eat. And it's like, I won't eat any faster if I stop talking. I'm mm -hmm. So lucky for me, I have a son-in-law who's really a slow eater. I don't know if he knows about mindfulness, but he's great <laughs> to have at the family dinners. <laughs> I, I have a sister-in-law, so the two of us are, everybody else can just leave town. You know, I'm like, <laughs> we're still eating. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Any comments? I like, um, because I live alone, I like to read when I'm eating sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then I get done and I don't, didn't, you know, it, that wonderful salad is all gone and like, how could it be gone? I didn't even taste it, you know, because I was reading. But I do that, you know, is a comfort thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that, that's a great point that we often um, watch TV or, mm -hmm. you know, read or are um, mm -hmm. very engaged in conversation, which mm -hmm. is okay, too. Um, so while I'm thinking about it, I'll mention this one tip. Um, in, um, in the mindfulness-based stress reduction course, which may be what you took, Josetta, um, we do this exercise and we also encourage mindful eating um, all of the eight weeks of the course. And if, if we did that with every single meal, you know, just the way that we ate that one piece of food, um, we, it would probably take us 24 hours to eat. Um, <laughs> So what I always suggest to people to just um, experience mindful eating is maybe the first bite of a meal, whether it be breakfast, lunch, dinner, pay attention, really pay attention to all of the sensations of that food. You know, take a really good look at it. Um, even touch it if you want. Um, smell it see if it makes a sound. And if your family thinks you're crazy, or if you've got someone in your family who does tend to, to shovel food in, I know that a lot of people who come from large families are fast eaters, because they knew that if they didn't eat quickly, they wouldn't get seconds, because all the seconds would be gone. My husband is one of those people. Um, so if, if you can just take one bite of one meal during the day and you know this is really fun with children or grandchildren you know like really making it a game and asking everybody so what it, what do you think what are you seeing what are you smelling that sort of thing um it, it's very very helpful um and so mindful eating doesn't have to be torturous <laughs> um it can just be a bite and that counts, okay? Um, one of the stories that I always tell when we do this exercise is um, I had a participant a couple of years ago um, in the stress reduction course. And when we came to the mindful eating portion of it, um, she chose breakfast as her mindful meal of the day. So she, every morning had scrambled eggs. She'd done this for years and years and years. And after she mindfully ate her scrambled eggs every day for about a week, she realized she didn't like scrambled eggs. <laughs> she really disliked the taste of them, the texture, everything about them. She said, I never thought about it before. I just ate them because <laughs> that's what I'd always done. So, you know, it's really amazing when we start to pay attention to things, um, what we can discover about ourselves. Um, and um, uh, I did want to talk before we get into some of the tips and um, I'll go quickly here. Uh, you know, children have such a great relationship with food, little children. Um, you know, infants, if you think about them sitting in their high chairs and um, they're exploring new tastes and, you know, they're, they're touching it, you know, they're just like getting their fingers into it and they're just, mm -hmm. you know, getting it all over their faces and their hands and their clothes. And, you know, they, they make facial expressions like, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. um, they just, they have such a healthy relationship 
with food. They use all of their senses and they don't have any of the, the, um, the barriers and the other various relationships with food that we develop as we become adults. Um, you know, it, it gets all tangled up. Um, eating gets all tangled up in, in emotions and thoughts about various things. And, you know, our very well-meaning families um, are responsible for instilling some of those thoughts and emotions into our eating habits. You know, if you were in a family where the, the clean plate club was really important, um, or, you know, you heard um, there are starving children in Africa or, you know, other countries, um, or, you know, you can't have dessert until you eat your mm -hmm. vegetables. Absolutely. So what does that do? It's like vegetables are a chore and then we get to the good stuff. So, you know, what ends up happening as we, um, become adults is then we, we react to those sorts of, um, guidelines, rules, that sort of thing. And, and we may become rebellious. Um, like when, when we are living on our own, you know, we may decide I'm going to go straight to dessert. I'm not even going to bother with my vegetables or, you know, I, I'm going to, I have a friend um, uh, who always leaves something on her plate because she's rebelling against the clean plate club. <laughs> Um, so, you know, things like that, you know, just kind of think about some of your eating habits, maybe as you, um, eat for the next week or so and see if any of them are coming from, uh, any of those patterns that you learned at a very, very early age. And, you know, we may pass them on to our children as well. Um, and of course we're well-meaning, um, we want our children to eat nutritious foods. We want them to eat their vegetables. Um, and, you know, at the same time, um, questioning, you know, what, what messages are we sending them? What messages are we sending ourselves? We do it all the time without judgment, though, you know, not, um, not criticizing ourselves. Um, these are things that are built into our culture. They're built into our family um, uh, habits and relationships, and they're all well-meaning. Um, it's just what gets instilled. So um, real quickly, I'm going to go through the, the nine hungers, and I have to see if my dog needs to be let in. Um, nine hungers. There's eye hunger. Of course, we know all about eye hunger. It looks so darn good. Right? <laughs> so it doesn't matter if we're completely full when that dessert cart comes around at the restaurant, those beautiful, you know, nine layer torts, got to have it. Um, and then there's touch hunger. Some, uh, some of us really like food that we touch like uh, fried chicken, French fries, onion rings, <laughs> popcorn, you know, that kind of stuff. We... Um, we love a food that we can touch. Um, ear hunger. There might be something we, a lot of people really respond to crunchy food. Crunch. Um, and there's, then there's nose hunger. Um, we can distinguish 10,000 different smells. And of course, um, some of them are pleasant to us. Some are unpleasant, but um, we do respond to them in many different ways. Um, so, you know, nose hunger may um, cause us to want to eat something. I mean, how often do you walk into a home on Thanksgiving day, for example, or in your own home, maybe you've been outside and then you walk in and you smell that turkey roasting and it's just, oh, I can't wait for it to be done. That's nose hunger. Mouth hunger. Um, you know, the, the food that we experience as, um, as pleasant, um, that really increases our appetite, uh, it, it's actually somewhat genetic. Um, cilantro, for example, 10% um, of the population finds cilantro to be um, absolutely revolting. 
Um, but 90% of us find it to be very delicious. Um, so um, a lot of that is genetic. And of course there are food habits in our, our families of origin and our cultural traditions, conditioning, you know, that sort of thing. Um, if, our, if our parents didn't find something to be particularly appetizing, chances are pretty darn good that we don't, unless we've rebelled against it or reacted against it. Um, and then of course there's stomach hunger when we actually hear that rumbling tummy and um, we, we decide that we need to feed it. The interesting thing is that um, we actually tell our stomachs when to be hungry, largely um, because of our schedules, our eating schedules. Um, and you know, the, the, our stomachs can't actually taste the food that we're eating, even though we assume that we're satisfying our stomachs. Our stomachs can't really taste it. The only thing they can do is like expand and stretch. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we need to start doing that for Thanksgiving day. So um, then there's cellular hunger and you know, cellular hunger is when our bodies are telling us what they need um, uh, to be healthy um, or to be satisfied. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of um, perhaps having a tremendous urge for a certain food mm -hmm. and maybe that food ha is rich in iron or maybe it's, it, it's a protein rich food, carb um, rich food, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. I, I, our bodies have a lot of wisdom about what they need. Um, and the more aware we are, the more we can listen to that sort of thing. And also cellular hunger relates to seasonal hunger. Um, when it starts to get cold, you know, we want more of those hearty foods. We want like stews and potatoes mm -hmm. and dense breads and things mm -hmm. like that. That's because from a um, uh, prehistoric standpoint, they needed to store fat in order to get through the winter because food wasn't readily available. We haven't lost that, um, that urge. Our brains still tell us you need to get, get busy and store for the winter. So, um, uh, and then there's mind hunger. Mind hunger is all about what we should and we should not eat. And it's largely based on what we're told, what advertising tells us, what scientific research tells us. Um, so, you know, it's, it's all the thoughts that we have about food. Um, remember when we were told that eggs were bad for us mm -hmm. because of the high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden that's not true any longer. You know, and it goes on and on and on. Coffee. Oh, coffee would stunt your growth. Um, and now they've, um, the, the latest research tells us that coffee is great for our brains. It activates us, <laughs> Janet drinking her coffee. <laughs> you know, it, it, um, it kind of jumpstarts our brains, not just in the morning, but anytime during the day. So uh, that's mind hunger. And then of course there's heart hunger. Um, that we're trying to fulfill some need, some, um, some hole in our hearts. Um, you know, that, that's kind of where comfort foods come in. Um, you know, maybe we're trying to evoke a memory or an emotion of some kind. And, and we often use food to do that. Um, I know I, it was really interesting to me on election night, I all of a sudden had the thought that I wanted caramel corn. <laughs> I, I don't eat caramel corn. I mean, I can't remember the last time I even thought about caramel corn. But it started to um, uh, recall a memory for me that my grandmother who lived with us when I was a child, um, used to make caramel corn every election night. <gasps> and that's why I wanted caramel corn. But my body 
was actually responding and my brain was responding to this memory. Um, and, you know, it was like an emotional comfort thing, you know, a very lovely memory of my grandmother. So, um, you know, that's it. We, we try to use food sometimes to fill um, an empty place in our hearts um, with comfort. So, um, so I'm going to real quickly go through um, some, some tips um, about becoming more aware of food. And then we'll do a little um, gratitude meditation. So paying attention, that's what it's all about. Attention and awareness of what's going on in your thoughts, your emotions, and your body sensations. Okay. Are there thoughts that accompany this urge for food? Are there emotions that you're, you're trying to, to fill or that you're experiencing and what are your physical sensations um and we could talk about this a lot more i wish we had a lot more time um because it's it's so interesting all of the research but anyway paying attention and awareness to those three things it's called the triangle of awareness thoughts emotions body sensations okay that's what we teach in mindfulness-based stress reduction mm. And then, you know, rejecting that diet mentality of um, um, deprivation. Boy, does that backfire sometimes. Um, almost, I, I would go so far as to say, usually it backfires because when we feel deprived, we're not gonna continue doing something. Um, to develop good habits, we um, uh, always need a positive outcome at the end, mm -hmm. or we're not going to continue trying to establish that habit. Okay, so deprivation doesn't feel good. We're not going to we're not going to hang in there for that long. Mm -hmm. Deprivation. So you know, really kind of rejecting even some of the New Year's resolutions that we make or um, what we give up for Lent can can really cause a backlash and trying to um, uh, uh, manage, control, maybe that's a better word, control what we're eating. And then also, of course, adopting body positive behaviors, exercising, you know, eating foods that really help us feel good. Um, paying attention to like when your energy is lagging, what, what is it that you need? Is there a certain food that might be helpful to you? Maybe you need a little bit of, of iron. Um, and, you know, I think that sometimes the, um, an interesting thing is um, sometimes when we're tired, um, we feel hungry or we, we think if we eat, we'll feel better. Sometimes maybe a little nap might be best. Or sometimes because we um, are just hungry, we, our emotions manifest in, you know, anger, or bad mood or whatever, just a little snack, you know, a little piece of cheese and a cracker might help. Um, and sometimes when we're sick, this is me, totally. I look to food to make me feel better. Mm -hmm. and it never does, but <laughs> for some reason, you know, my, my body associates feeling sick with eating. Probably my grandma again. She used to always make me grilled cheese and tomato soup mm -hmm. when I was sick. So, you know, things like that. It's all about awareness. Um, and real quickly, I, um, uh, I don't think we can talk about um, mindful eating without talking about being kind to our bodies. And um, I always like to give this, this definition for respect when it comes to respecting our bodies. What is the definition for respect? And think about this in terms of how you think about your body. So respect is mm -hmm. honor, regard, admiration, reverence, esteem, politeness, courtesy, dignity, civility, deference. Is that how you think about your body? 
because that's what respecting your body is all about. Mm. And also accepting our body's genetic blueprint. You know, some of us are never going to, um, you know, have that um, uh, fashion model type body. You know, I'm 5'2". Um, I have to accept the fact that I'm never going to be uh, six feet tall. You know, we, we can accept our shoe size, but we have a hard time accepting that, you know, maybe um, we've got uh, bigger hips than we would like. That's genetics. You know, what can we do about it? And having gratitude for what our body does for us, very much so in like in that first meditation that we did, all of the amazing things that our bodies do for us. And, you know, trying to stop comparing our bodies to others. Um, and also an important aspect can be altering the language we use when we speak about our bodies. Instead of saying that, oh my gosh, I look so fat in this dress, you know, maybe saying, to yourself, reframing that and saying, this dress style does not suit my body type. Right? So there's all kinds of things we, we say to ourselves. Um, language is very powerful. Um, so, you know, some, uh, some real quick tips. Um, taking a moment before, before we eat. Um, and this is where you can engage your family. And, you know, Linda, you were asking about your husband. And this is maybe where you can engage your husband, just making it kind of a fun game. Take a moment, look at the food, you know, just really pause and notice any thoughts or feelings that might be present. Like, I'm really hungry and I want this food right now. Um, or this isn't one of my favorite meals, but okay, you know, it's what I've got in front of me. Um, you know, just noticing any relation to the food that you, you're about to eat. And um, uh, as I said, it can really be a fun game to play um, with kids, with grandchildren, um, with husbands, <laughs> with wives, um, whatever. You know, just really one meal a day, just paying attention to that first bite, pausing, taking a breath. And then check into your hunger and your fullness level before you start eating. You know, are you really, there was one how hungry are you? The upper right corner. Um, you know, how, um, just never uh, how full are you as you start eating? And, would and doing that um, occasionally throughout your meal, just checking your, your fullness level. I think it takes 20 minutes for mm -hmm. the food to actually get down into your stomach and um and for you to begin to actually feel that you've mm -hmm. you've been eating so that's what, kind of where the slower eating comes in as an advantage um we can notice that we're getting full before we've chowed it all down um and uh of course enjoying your food with all of your senses and um taking a moment to reflect on how the food arrived on your plate. And this can be something that you can talk about with your family as you're eating um, or just reflecting on all by yourself. You know, what, what did it take for the food to, to uh, be on your plate? Who planted the seeds or, um, you know, that, that um, little baby animal that was born? Um, and how were those nurtured to grow? Um, what did it take for that corn to grow? Um, the soil, the water, all of that, the care of the person who was nurturing the food. Um, what about the harvest? What about the packaging, you know, the processing, the transportation to get it to the store? What did they have to do in the store, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then what did you do in order to prepare the food? You know, finding the recipe. There's so much to think about when um, it comes to food. So practice, practice, practice. When it comes to mindful eating, it's all about um, doing it on a regular basis and really, really thinking about our food in so many different ways. Okay. 
So um, any questions, comments before we do a little final meditation? No? Okay. Wait a minute, Jan, I'm going to say that same comment that I did the other night because it always worked for my husband and I, and we always did this practice in the evening, and I had always lit a candle, and we just started, um, whenever you put food in your mouth, you put your utensils down, and you, you know, you eat, you don't keep that utensil in your hand and keep shoveling it in mm -hmm. because you're you're just not doing justice to the food or to the person who prepared it because I take a lot of time in preparing my food I'm very organized and I do everything from scratch so I want people to enjoy it so, absolutely and that comes with eating slow yes Yes. Yeah. I agree. It mm -hmm. it's really hard to spend yes. several hours in the kitchen. Yes. And the food is gone in ten uh -huh. minutes. Yes. <laughs> and then we spend another hour cleaning up. So, uh -huh. Yes. So and okay. I agree with you. And you know, as I mentioned the other night too, Darlene, I think that's a great um mm -hmm way of appreciating your food is you know by putting mm -hmm. your utensils down mm -hmm. um either between bites or at different periods throughout the meal you know and mm -hmm. just oh my goodness allowing yourself kind of checking in with that that fullness factor mm -hmm. and just appreciating always appreciating what you're eating and the the work that it took into or that um was required to get it there. yes I'm also, I've got a couple of teenagers coming Thursday, so I'm going to um, pop a whole big bowl of um, popcorn and give them chopsticks. <laughs> oh, I love I'll take care of them. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> no what more a, handfuls in the mouth. What a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I should do that because I, I love popcorn and I tend to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay anything anybody else before we we do a final meditation okay i'll come back later because i had the thought but i let oh, it go work. ahead no go ahead josetta that, well i can't even remember what it is right now but it'll okay <laughs> okay um all righty so um, let's just once again, close our eyes and find that comfortable position for yourself. And just be still for these last few moments, taking in some, some nice breaths, Deep breath in through your nose and then exhaling through your mouth. And remembering that this is something you can do any time during the day to activate that relaxation. Just inhaling through your nose and exhaling twice as long through your mouth. Simple, easy, always with you. And just making a, another quick scan of your body from head to toe. How are you feeling? Any different from when we began? Without judgment, just noticing, just awareness. And what about your thoughts and your emotions? How are they right now? There's no way you should be thinking or feeling, just, just noting where you are with your thoughts and your emotions.
and perhaps um, noticing sensations of temperature, of touch, of any pain or tension, or perhaps any sensations of hunger since we've been talking about food. And perhaps considering where that, those sensations of hunger are, might be coming from. Without judging or changing anything, just allowing your body to relax and release any tension or stress with each exhale, breathing just at your natural rhythm. And now bringing your attention to the area of your chest, acknowledging once again, the unconditional work that your heart and your lungs do for you, beating and breathing nonstop, day and night. So see if you can feel gratitude, joy, appreciation, and compassion for your heart, your lungs, and your whole body appreciating it for sustaining your life and letting you enjoy all that you enjoy. And as you breathe in and out, bringing to heart and to mind all that you feel thankful for in your life. Perhaps the fact that you are breathing, that you're feeling, that you're being you, right here, right now. Perhaps you're grateful for the people you love and their presence in your life. Perhaps pause and cultivate gratitude for mother nature and all of mother nature's wonders, air, water, space, plants, animals, beautiful landscapes, the tiny beings, that your eyes can't even see. And of course, the food, the food that we have in our homes and that we are, uh, see on our plates. And allow this appreciation for life to nourish your soul, expanding your feelings of love, joy, gratitude, and compassion towards yourself and everything around you. Aware of the interconnectedness of all things and beings. Thanking the universe for the opportunities. The opportunities we have to nourish our bodies and our souls. And when thinking about nourishing our bodies, bringing to your heart all those people in all the corners of the planet who don't have food available to nourish their bodies. With generosity, send them wishes of health, love, security, and nourishment. Sending wishes that their suffering be diminished. And finally, thank yourself too for all of your efforts and for nourishing your spirit despite the challenges of our lives right now and always. So as we end, I wish you a bountiful, loving Thanksgiving. Stay well. Enjoy your, your time with loved ones if that's what you will be doing and um, know that uh, everyone is feeling a lot of, of love and compassion sending out to, to those who can't be with those they love. 
So thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs>